At a primary school in Saltford, on the outskirts of Bristol, a class of Year 6 pupils is studying the local environment. Over the next two days, they will be using resources from Ordnance Survey to learn about mapping and their local district. What we're going to be doing is looking at symbols, map symbols, and how we can identify map symbols, and then how we can identify them on a map and, and relate them to the features in the local environment that are important. Once we've done that, we're going to um, plan our activities for field work. So what I want the children to do is to find places in the local environment that they think would be important to put on a map. The work that Liz will be doing with the class forms part of the Key Stage 2 syllabus on geography. Is there anybody that would like to remind us what specific part of mapping skills we've been looking at so far? George. Map symbols. Map symbols. Well done, George. In this programme, we will see how Liz is using the resources provided by the Ordnance Survey on its Map Zone website. This site is available to all teachers and is aimed at 7 to 16 year olds. And then I go into the one that says Map Ability. Map Zone is um, a resource which is really great for primary schools to use, especially for the upper end of primary schools. The children can um, log on to the website and then they can talk about um, different mapping skills that they might want to use. They can go through the different parts of the Map Zone website, which are divided into the different strategies that you might need to use to read a map, and they can practice and learn the activities for reading a map. An authority in this field is Liz's father, Dick Bateman. He works with both primary and secondary schools in developing geography. I've seen it develop from when I started, where there was lots of emphasis on factual knowledge, where you wanted to know where in the world places were and what they were like. And over the years, that sort of regional geography has changed, and now it's become more systematic, looking more at the processes which make places what they are. Um, uh, old fogies like me think that some of the baby has gone out with the bathwater there and that youngsters might know all about uh, the processes going on within a central business district but couldn't put Norwich on a map. Liz is aiming to teach these children basic map reading skills. Using the games and tests on the website, the class refresh their understanding of reading map symbols. You get given um, the cards and you've got to match up to the map symbol. And so we've been playing that quite a lot. So the games are fun, but um, you still learn while doing them. Right, OK, which one do you think it is, George? The red but it's not all about learning in the classroom. Liz has planned a field trip. Well done. From the Map Zone website, we can also go to a linked website, which is sponsored by the Ordnance Survey. And that website is called Geograph. OK, so I'm going to take you through that. What they're trying to do with Geograph is get pictures from all across the British Isles to match to grid references on your Ordnance Survey maps. Okay? What I would like us to think about now is the kind of um, landscape features or man-made features in Saltford that we could add on to the Geograph website. They're the people that you're working with. This is the church, it's the oldest place in Saltford. Yeah. Oh, and Korean the brass mill. Where's the most historic place in Saltford, aren't they? What about the um, brass mill? Or uh, should we just go to the like the Yeah, we should just go to like the garages and, and um, yeah. pubs. Scout hut? Oh yeah. Um, A4? Yeah. The row shops maybe? Yeah. Say we did go on a very long walk and we went near Longwood. Yeah. Well the wood, like near Longwood and we like took, could take pictures of the wood. That's actually quite good, isn't it? We could do stock and um, we could do um just the beginning of the cycle track as you go up to it. Yeah. Because it used to be a uh, river, then it turned into a train track, then it turned into a cycle track. So it's quite actually it's quite interesting. Having decided which local landmarks they would like to feature, the children set off on their field walk around Saltford. In addition to taking photos for the Geograph website, they are taking photos for their local studies project. This involves selecting the right symbols to match with local features. The local studies project that we're going to be doing is a fieldwork exercise where we're going to go around and identify different features in our local environment that we think would be significant enough to mark on a map. So effectively I'm getting the children to be surveyors of the local environment. That's fine. No, a bit closer. That's good. 
A field trip such as this offers the children an experience they can't get in the confines of a classroom. Field trips always offer that business of reality being different from the textbooks. That flat page, even if you've got a nice digital image, nice sharp one, is not the same when you get out there and it's three dimensions and there are noises and smells. And youngsters love being out of school, don't they? They, they don't see it as work, they see it as fun. We'll check on the symbols. What's the main road? That one. The yellow. There you go. And linking the map symbols with the actual features in their locality brings the lessons of the classroom to life. I think that ties in the dry information, let's say on an ordnance survey map, with the reality. And if the youngsters are looking at a symbol of a church and there's the church behind them or in front of them as they're looking at the symbol, they're matching it up. So the next time they look, say, at an ordnance survey map and they see the symbol, that mental picture of the church comes into mind and they can see what it is. I think that's so, so important. I think the children have learnt about the map symbols and thought very carefully about how they can relate those to the actual features in the, of the environment. And I think they've had fun doing it. And I think if they're having fun, they're learning without realising it. It was quite fun because we got to walk around with lots of friends and we saw lots of different things and we saw some trains on the railway um, station. Well, I've uploaded the school, uh, Golf Club Lane, the picnic area, uh, the river. I think I did the Salford Memorial and that sort of stuff. It was fun going around Salford because, um, well, you're going outside class, not listening to all the lessons, and you get to take lots of pictures of everything around you. The next day, the children begin their lesson by checking the route they took on their field trip with the aid of an ordnance survey map. OK, is there anyone who would like to just point out some of the places that we visited and why you think they were significant to note? Lily? The Crown. And why did you note the Crown? Because it's a good place to visit with some friends and you can have a lot of fun there because you've got stuff for kids as well. Very good. Can anybody remember what the symbol for the crown would be when you're marking it on your map? Yes, Tom? It was the blue mug because, um, it's, because um, it's a mug and you could drink stuff out of it. Well done. Is there anybody who noted something else? Sammy, what did you note? Well, I, I think the... St Mary's Church. And why did you think St Mary's Church was important? Because on Sundays people can go there and worship if they want to. Excellent. Well done. Can anybody remember the sign for a church? Jordan. Um, there's three. Um, one's a cross. I know there's a cross with a circle underneath. I know there's a cross with a square underneath. And which one do you think we would have for St Mary's Church? A cross with a square underneath. Why? because it's got a big tower. Excellent. Well, One of the main things that they need to do is to realise about their local area. And I think the thing that the maps can tell us about their local area is information that actually they may not be aware of themselves, especially if they go to um, school in a car, yes, if they're travelling you know around in a car all the time, the they might not realise things about their local area. See what it's Armed with their photos, the children move into the ICT suite. Here they will select their best pictures and use them to customise a map for their local studies project. Using an interactive mapping project, which uses data from the Ordnance Survey, they're going to then put the places that they visited onto the map and create an interactive project that would help let other people find out about our area. Okay, well done boys, you've done really well. Have you put any information in about any of these places? Oh, yeah. yeah, we'll do that later. Yeah. Well, we're sort of putting in hyperlinks. Um, you can't put sound in them, but you can put in pictures and text. And I'm uploading the pictures from um, the file into the, my project. Taking digital images, trying to capture that reality of what we're talking about, 
showing them to youngsters, getting the youngsters to interact with the images. Now that can be done in a traditional format with the teacher leading the class. But more and more people are personalising this so that students can input their own information. They can feel that they've got a certain ownership to it. So that sort of more individualisation and personalisation of, of the work is where ICT is able to move the student away from that te traditional teacher-led business. Once they've completed their local studies project, the children set about selecting photos for their submission to the Geograph website. It's about that one, Robert. These have all got pictures. This has got a person with a sign. That's not me. So it wouldn't be any use. Cat That's not me. Really a very good geograph. Yeah, same one there. That one's good because it's got a rail truck in. That's very important for salt lakes. Excellent. So that's a good one. That one. We thought that was very good. It's um, got a view of the river and the weir overlooking the brass mill. So you've got quite a lot of things in there all at once. That's really good to take. So yeah, is that so the one that we think we yeah, should use? I think we should use that one. So now we need to submit, don't we? We need to submit a picture. Okay. Right. First of all, we need to look at this then, don't we? And we need to decide. It's their first opportunity to apply the map reading skills they've learnt over the last two days. Making sure the information they submit is accurate is very important, as it's a national site monitored by Ordnance Survey. Okay, so if you go down to the bottom of there, I think it will be. It says it right there. What's your position? We're looking onto the river. We're looking that way. We were on the no, we're on the footbridge, and we're looking that way. So it's southeast. Yeah. Okay. A photographer position. We need to locate that on this map here. Yeah. Very good. So you're in the same grid reference. That's important. Yeah. So, good to know. Is that the photo you selected? Yeah, that's the one. Excellent. Do you think it makes a good? Job? Having successfully submitted their photo to the Geograph website, these children have literally put Saltford on the map. The photos are now available to view online. Details of how to access the Ordnance Survey resources can be viewed on the Teachers TV website. I think the children have been brilliant. They've learnt really uh, a lot about their local environment. They've become really good geographers. What, what's happened is that they've become more aware of the environment and, and our local area. They've picked out features that they wouldn't have been picking out before. I'm thinking of the footbridge, I'm thinking of the railway. Um, that they haven't thought of as significant features in our local area because they don't see them day to day. I think in this day and age, Geography can be squeezed, like lots of other subjects, can be squeezed out a little bit. It's difficult for us to, as teachers to find time to fit it in. And I would just like to um, reinforce how important it is to do it and how if you are just doing a little bit, do it really well, get out and do some field work, use the MapZone website to help you prepare for that and think about how the children can reflect on their field work by coming back and, um, and maybe putting a project together. The sort of stuff that's been happening in Saltford this week where Fieldwork, digital images and maps are all combined and the youngsters become interactive between all three. That's the future. <laughs>